visions. I have a vision for you today. It's found in in Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 through 12. And it says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me, test me herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. God has promised. It's the vision. Let's put faith, as, as, as it's all been told, let's keep faith. Let's keep the vision before us. Let's write the vision. Let's run the race. Will the deacons come forward? Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. Thank you for your vision. We pray, Father God, that by your spirit, Lord, we will run the race that you've called us to run. Help us to trust you, Lord, in all things. Now bless this offering, bless this tithe. Lord, we ask that you would use it for your purpose to accomplish your will, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray, we do give thanks. Amen.
Amen. We also want to keep the Cowan family in our prayers. Sister Elizabeth Woodfin, her mother passed this week, and we want to keep that family in our prayers. The funeral is going to be on Friday, uh, viewing at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. The funeral will be here at our church. So keep the Cowan family in your prayers as well. Amen. We've had a wonderful church service today, divine worship service. Amen. And, the, and it's, 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 it's going to keep on going. Our um, Sabbath school lessons, uh, I see some of our young people have already started to head into their classes. Our new members class, well, you'll stay in here. So you won't go to Grace Chapel, so just stay where you are. Now, if uh, I studied this whole month, it's going to be uh, from the social justice and science of the end book and if you need one sister smith if you need some books sister smith has some and we have some down here so just raise your hand let's get some help here sister smith has some over there if you need some books i see some hands over there sister smith raise your hands because this is what we're going to be studying out of also you can find it in the also, you can find it in the Sabbath School newsletter. How many of you received the Sabbath School newsletter this week? Very good. Please go ahead and register your attendance. I see a few phones out. Go ahead and pull your phones out and register your attendance. We still need you to register your attendance. And for those of you who are at home, go ahead and register your attendance as well. And if you need a copy of this book, for those of you who are online, if you need a copy of this book, we will mail one to you. Our telephone number is area code 901-774-5431. Again, area code 901-774-5431. Give us your name and address, and we will send one of these to you free of charge. Again, 901-774-5431. And you will receive one. All right. This study is going to be taught by our pastor. Let's say amen. He's going to be teaching this study this month. So make sure everyone has a book. And again, if you need one electronically, go to the newsletter. You can find it there as well. All right. Good morning, everybody. Or is it afternoon already? <laughs> Still morning? Okay, good. Look, we, we believe that we should recognize the history of African Americans. We don't have to just do it in February. Are y'all listening to me? But we, we do need to recognize that the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. Am I right about it? Um, none of you all were slaves. Right? I mean, talking about American slavery, okay? None of, some of us remember Jim Crow. Does anybody remember Jim Crow? Anybody go to some of the, yeah, okay, some of us. But today, we're going to talk about social justice and signs of the end. Signs of the end. Social justice and signs. How does it relate to people that look like us? So if you don't have a book, this is the book that we're going to be using. Each, each, um, each, each Sabbath in the month of February, I'm going to be covering a topic in this book. And if you want to do our regular Sabbath school lesson, we're going to have it at Sabbath school overtime. Um, and that starts at what time? Two o'clock. So you can go on Sabbath school overtime and cover the, the regular Sabbath school lesson. Today we're, going to, we're starting with increased knowledge. Are you all giving me a time? I like that. How much time are you all giving me? I know. Is there, all right, good. Good, good. 
Father, which art in heaven, be with your word again today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Increase of knowledge. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. The time of the end. I'm on page number one. Page number one. That's where I would start. Everybody, everybody with me? I'm on page number one. I go really fast, so you have to, you have to help me. Does anybody have a microphone? So that if, I want, I'm going to ask you to do some reading. So are uh, are some statements that you'd like to make? So please bring the microphones out so we can do that as well. Question: What is the difference between the time of the end, Sister Horton? You can't answer this. What is the difference between the time of the end and the end of time? Somebody have a hand? Go ahead. Go ahead. What's the difference between the time of the end and the end of time? According to Bible prophecy, the time of the end it started in 1798. Okay. And All right. the end of time is what we're living in right now. Okay, okay, okay. I, 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 I get that. I'm not, not trying to say. I have a different little view of it. Anybody else? Okay. All right, listen. My Uncle Hardy had chickens. And when he would say, Alex, let's go and wring the chicken's neck. For that chicken, it was the time of the end. You see that? The chicken didn't know it. But it was the time of the end for that chicken. Now once he went out in the backyard of his farm and wring the neck of the chicken and the chicken was dead, it was the end of time. All right? Are y'all following me? So the end of time happens when God finishes this thing. Are y'all with me? When God finishes it, right now, we're living in the times of the end, but the time hasn't ended yet. Am I right? Are you still alive? Are we still on the earth? Until we get to heaven... Right now, we're living in, but there are signs that we're living in. The, the signs that we're living in just before Jesus comes. Okay? The time of the end. The time of the end's vision in Daniel and in America and the American descendants of slavery. How does that affect us? That's really what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to page two. Will someone read Daniel chapter 8? Well, let's do Daniel 8, 17. It's right there in your lesson. Someone stand up. We have a microphone. Something. Come on, somebody stand up and read for me. Hold on, get a microphone back there. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, we'll get you the next one. So he came near where I stood, and when I came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said unto me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Daniel 8, 17. Okay, Sherry, go ahead and turn to Daniel 8, 19. Sherry, okay, Daniel 8, 19. That her, it's in, you got to look it in the Bible, though. It's not in your lesson. Okay, look, at it, look it up in the Bible. Daniel 8, 19. All right, so... Daniel has a vision. Go ahead, get ready to find it. I'm giving you a chance to find it. Daniel 8, 19. All right? Daniel has a vision, and he's saying, this vision is for the time of the end. Daniel was not living in that time. So Daniel had to learn what's going to happen, but it wasn't happening in his lifetime. Someone read Daniel 8, 19. Sherry, would you read that, please? And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indication for at the time appointed the end shall be. I don't know if you noticed even in Habakkuk, God has a time, a appointed time when he's going to finish this thing. You can't rush it. You can't slow it down. 
it's God's time. I don't know when it is. Nobody knows when Jesus is going to come. But we do know, according to the Bible, that he's going to come again. All right, we got to go through some prophecy, some, some scriptures that describe prophecy. All right? The day of the year principle. Somebody tell me, what text in the Bible tells us about the day for the year principle? Someone tell me what text in the Bible shares with us the day of the day equals a year principle. Uh, Ezekiel, chapter, Ezekiel chapter four verses verse uh, six. six. That's it. That's it. That's nine. not even. See, that's a good study. That's not even in the lesson. That's good. That's a good one. And what's the other one? Numbers. Uh, what numbers? Four. 14, 1434. It's, it's right in your lesson. 1434 is in your lesson. Okay? So when we give prophecy and we say a day, it actually, in prophecy now, not real life, but in prophecy, a day. So if I say five days, I mean five what? Five years. Are y'all following me so far? In prophecy, a day equals a year. Are y'all following me? And a time represents a year. How do you know that? See, the Bible is its, is its own interpreter. This is not in your lesson. You'd have had to be a student to do this uh, of the Bible, okay? Daniel chapter, uh, let's see, 4, verse 16. Someone read Daniel 4, 16. You have to write these down. I don't have a lot of time. Daniel 4, 16. Somebody stand up and read it, please. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. Seven times pass over him. This is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Because of his arrogance, God had him to be, to act like a beast, right? And for seven times, this is where we get this word times from. Because for seven years, he had to be like a beast in the field. And afterwards, his kingdom was restored to him. So when we look at the word time in Bible prophecy, it means a what? A year. All right? So in our scripture text today, Daniel 12, 7 and Daniel 12, 6 and, and 13 and all these texts, it talks about when will the time of the year end happen? It says a time equals what? One year totaling 360 days, literal years, okay? Times is two totaling what? 720 days are literal years. And half a time is half a year, which is half a literal years, okay? Is 100 and how many days? If you add 360, 720, and 180, what do you have? 1,260 days. And so what we have to say is that God was saying to Daniel that the time of the end will begin in this amount of time, in 1,260 days. And then the time of the end will begin. However, how do you know when to start counting this time period? Well, the Bible tells us that there's certain things that are going to happen that, that, that has to anoint the most holy or has to, to take away the, the daily sacrifice. All of these things were happening when the Pope caused the Roman Empire to leave. The Roman Emperor left and went to Constantinople and in Rome... The Pope was in charge. And at that time, he tried to change times and laws. We know what time that is because history tells us. What time did that happen? Who said it? 538 B.C. 538 B.C. is when the Pope of Rome said he's in charge of the whole church and he started controlling all the activities of the church. And in 538 B.C., if we start counting 1,260 years, then that's, that is telling us that our days, 
That is telling us that it is during this particular time, there was no major invent, in, inventions. There was nobody with new knowledge. You know why? Because during this time, the Bible was chained to the desk of the church. If you don't have the Bible, you're not going to have knowledge. But after 1798, when the Pope General, General excuse me, when, the, when Napoleon's general, Berthier, captured the Pope and said, religion, we're going to have religion of reason, then all of a sudden, people stopped following everything the Pope said. And all of a sudden, there were so many different types of inventions. Because in our scripture, it says that knowledge shall increase. Amen. Many will run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So, so we, we, we've already established that, that from 538 to 1798 was the time of the dark ages. No inventions were happening at that time. Daniel said that the time of the end is going to be noted. A sign of the time of the end will be that knowledge will increase. Is everybody following me right now? Is anybody, are y'all lost? You, you, you know where I'm at? Okay. I'm going to go to page three, Sister Horton. The vision unsealed in the time of the end. Now, this, this is something that's unique to our church. I think it's really great. Because in Daniel 8.14, what does Daniel 8.14 say? Okay, somebody stand up with a microphone and read it. Daniel 8.14. And he said unto me for 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay, okay. A day in the Bible prophecy equals to what? A year. So to 2,300 years, the sanctuary will be cleansed. Now, the sanctuary cleansing, we thought as Advent believers that it was the coming of Jesus. But actually, we were wrong. It was Jesus starting judgment. Okay? So we'd have to know when this time period begins. The time period began, the 2,300-day period prophecy. The Bible says until the going forth and the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And when did that happen, somebody? For, are y'all reading this? I'm, I'm writing, I'm following the paper. Okay. 456, you see that? Is, is, is Brother, Brother Michael, you're the only one reading it? Does anybody else have any answers? <laughs> okay, okay. How we always talk about how difficult the, the 2300-day prophecy is. Let me make it really simple. Take 2300 and subtract 456. You can't do that in your head? Take your calculator out. 2300. Put it on a piece of paper. Do the math. What did Jesus say? Somebody said a date. 1844. See how, see how simple that was? 2300. That's how many days, how many years. Subtract 456. And you come up to what? 1844. 1844 is when God entered the most holy place and started the investigative, or like I like to call it, the Advent Judgment. Where, judge, where God began to judge people before he was in the holy place. But in 1844, the Day of Atonement began, and he went into the most holy place. Now, I covered a whole lot of stuff in a short amount of time, but the easy way to remember it is whenever you have 2,300 days, and you're trying to find when judgment begins, subtract the starting date. Are you with me? Subtract the starting date. It's all in the lesson. Subtract the starting date, and you'll come up when it ends. The hour of God's judgment has come. So Daniel could not understand how the time of the end would happen because it really wasn't for him. It was many years in the future. And God said, Daniel, you just stay in your place. You're going to die. You'll never see this. You won't understand it. But 
But eventually, the wise people that study the word of God, they will get it. Okay, I'm on page three. Somebody, somebody read where it says, word of judgment in heaven. Did you see that? Under read Ephesians 3, 6, 9. Then somebody stand up and read, word of judgment in heaven did not reach. If the word of judgment in heaven did not reach the slaves in the South. However, as early as the 1840s, there were several black freedmen in the North who had joined with Miller in judgment proclamation. Most notably among them were William Still, 1821 through 1902, a freed slave of the avid ab abolish, how do you say that? Ab abolitionist. Ab abolitionist. That. And author of several books involving the slave's experience. Sojourner Truth, outspoken that. Mm -hmm. and activist for women's rights, and William Foy, who in 1842 received several visions regarding the judgment and the second coming of Christ, but who, because of his color, featured, feared to publicize them. So, so there were black people that heard it, but it was a small group of them. Are y'all following me? They understood some of it, but they didn't know right away because most black people could not read in 1844. Are y'all following me? All right. But you know, God always has a vision. God will always, you, he always has a remnant that he sends the truth to them. And those are the ones that have to share it with everybody else. And so these black people that were hearing about this, they shared it with others, and that's how people learn. And they, I found out that there are two phases of judgment. The first phase is where God is in the holy place, or in the most holy place, and he's in the advent judgment, or the investigative judgment. But then the next phase of judgment is the executive, or the sentencing phase of the judgment. Okay, okay. I hate to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up. There was a, a prominent ex-president that was going through some judgment. And they already said that he was guilty. That was the first phase of the judgment. But the executive punishment phase said how much he had to pay. Are y'all following me so far? Mm. You, know, you know where they got that from? From the Bible. <laughs> They figured out that judgment has to have two phases to it. First, you have to see if the person is guilty. And then once you recognize they're guilty, what is the punishment? The wicked have an opportunity right now to change. Hallelujah. But once they have reached the executive form of judgment, it's once saved, always saved. Once lost, always lost. He that is unjust will be unjust still, and he that is holy will be holy still. So we're not in the executive phase. Hallelujah! Because a lot of us wouldn't make it. But good news is that if we have Jesus on eternal retainer, that he will cover us in the judgment. Are y'all listening to me today? All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let me have a question. The jury phase of judgment, the investigative of human records, begins with Adam and Eve, has lasted approximately 180 years. Since 1844, God has been judging for 180 years. What reason can you think of such a long, lengthy process? You thought it's long for your judgment. God has been judging for 100. Let me ask you, do you think it takes God 180 years to judge? Why do you think it's taking so long? What'd you say? He's merciful. He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. If he had just... Some people... Now, I tell you, when the judgment... When you die, your case is, is, is complete. Am I right about it? Amen. When you die, you don't have a second chance. If you've been living a life that's not following God... You don't get to die and then change your mind. Say, so, okay, now I want to follow God. When you die, your case is over. 
All right? But as long as you're alive, you have an opportunity to repent. Are y'all following me so far? Amen. Isn't that good news? I don't care how much sin you've been in, as long as you're alive, you have an opportunity to repent. So, why do you think it's been such a lengthy process? For 180 years, God has started with Adam, and he talks with all, all the people that are alive, and he starts with the righteous, and he goes on. God could finish judgment in a nanosecond, but he's waiting for you and me. Amen. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Isn't that awesome? I don't know how long he's going to wait, but I, I am going to tell you that eventually judgment will be over. Sure. Are you listening to me? It's not going to leave. It's not going to be forever. Wednesday's lesson: Black Americans. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Tuesday. Tuesday's January the 30th. An awakening of knowledge and the end of time. Someone read Proverbs 2 verse 6. And while they're getting ready to read that. I want somebody to start reading, get ready to read that whole paragraph with all the different things that have happened at that particular time. Proverbs 2, verse 6. I can't hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. God is trying to help us to understand this, and he's the only one that can. But he's not telling us the date when he's going to come, but he is telling us that it's going to be soon. Okay, I need someone to do a lot of reading for me. Where it says knowledge is correctly defined, will someone read all of that for me, please? Go ahead, stand up, stand up so we know where you are. Microphone, go, go to them. Just stand up so we know where you are. Okay. Okay. Knowledge is correctly defined as functional comprehension of matter, whether spiritual or material. Both aspects of this definition are observable in the unsealing of Daniel's 2,500-year-old time capsule that included not only symbols of spiritual truths, but stupendous advances in science and general knowledge as well. The seven-day Adventist Bible Commentary Review and Herald Publishing Association, Washington, D.C., 1955, volume four, page 879. Sister Patricia, stay, keep on reading down there. Where's time, the end, just keep on reading. Okay, yes, sir. Time of the end, advances in science and general knowledge in addition to those of the revolution of transportation, detailed in Sunday's study include the wireless telegraph in 1844, the discovery of an antiseptics in 1847, the process of pasteurization excuse me, in 1856, the typewriter prototype in 1867, the traffic light in 1868, the incandescent mm -hmm. electric light bulb in 1879, the modern, the modern seismograph in 1880, the functional mechanical cash register in 1884, the contact lens in 1887, the escalator, in 1891, the portable motion picture camera in 1895, the motor-driven vacuum cleaner in 1899. Okay, just read that last paragraph for me. I'm giving you a lot of work to do. Yes, sir. <laughs> While there had been approximately 50 U.S. patents issued in the 19th century, there were nearly four times more issued in the 20th century, among the latter are the marvels of radios, house phones, hand phones, televisions, and email. In this century, others have been added. Smartphones, GPS navigation, e-readers, cryptocurrency, 
digital cameras, electric cars, human genome mapping, YouTube, and other social media. Have we not have some wisdom here? In fact, if you don't have any wisdom and any intelligence, you could just use artificial intelligence, okay? Now, the whole, the whole point simply is that we are in a time of learning, of wisdom, of knowledge. Your, your smartphone in two years or three years is obsolete. Am I right? You got to get another one. How did that happen? Because the Bible says at the time of the end that knowledge shall increase. The reason why we know we're close to the time of the end is because people are inventing things that you never thought before. How many of you all would ride in a car that doesn't have a driver? Y'all scared? Okay, 40 years ago, I would ask the same question, and you all would say no. How many of you all would fly in a plane? And some of y'all say, oh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to and I go, hopefully you've gotten over it. But if that, I understand, you know, okay. Uh, but, but my point simply is, knowledge has increased. Am I right about it? Knowledge has increased. And the increasing of knowledge is proof that Jesus is soon to come. Amen. Question, Matthew 24, 14 states, when the gospel has been preached into all the world, then shall the end come. Give current circumstance, given current circumstances in and out of the church, what do you judge to be the major reason for Jesus' delay? We're not ready. We're still, we're still arguing about who's going to be first. <laughs> we're still arguing about, I want that position. I, I, I think it ought to be done. Our traditional things. And Jesus is trying to get us ready for the second coming. But we are, God is merciful to us, isn't he not? Wednesday, January the 31st, black American status at the beginning of time. Okay, I need somebody to help me read. Somebody else, there's a, is a, a paragraph, given the conditions of blacks at the end of slavery. Will someone stand and read that for me, please? Just that one paragraph. Given the condition of blacks at the end of slavery, it was easy for white American citizenry to declare them as inferior. This theory was formally expressed in the Supreme Court ruling of 1823 that upheld the 1493 Doctrine of Discovery. Endorsing bias racial attitudes expressed by Spain's Pope Alexander VI on May 4, 1493, the Supreme Court statement included other ethnic groups, but its specific focus on blacks was to justify colonialism, slavery, racism, and social Darwinism. In summary, the notion of the inferiority of black intelligence embraced the beliefs that black were genetically inferior as a race of people, i.e., born with inferior brains, limited capacity for mental growth, and abnormal personality, tends and functions best psychologically when he stays or is forcibly kept within the limits of his handicap, where unburdened by responsibility, he is cheerful and happy. Alexander Thomas, MD, and Samuel Sillen, PhD, Racism and Psychiatry, Bernal Mazel Publishers. Do you all believe that? Absolutely not. No. But people will say stuff like that about you. Won't they? People are still, in fact, other black people say it about black people. Isn't that amazing? Because sometimes we think that we're lower. Oh, the black person can't do this, they can't do that. You can do whatever God gives you to do. How do we fight against white supremacy? We do our best in school. Yep. Uh, is anybody listening to me today? Read. I'm going to say that again. Read. <laughs> when we read, we learn more. Am I right about it? But if you don't, if you want to really know the truth, you've got to read. Don't don't just believe what I say. Check me out. Fact check me. See if I'm telling the truth. Oh, yeah, I'm a pastor. I should tell the truth. But pastors lie, too. 
Am I right about it? But the only way you'll know the truth if you read it for yourself. There's too many people listening to Reverend so-and-so and and Pastor so-and-so and and Priest so-and-so and and they're believing the junk that the devil is telling them. Read for yourself. You are God's child. Hallelujah. You can, higher than the human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness and God-likeness is the goal to be reached. That's where God really wants us to be. Are y'all listening to me today? I see your hand. Let the microphone come up. She's coming right there. That's, that's good. Excuse me, Pastor and class. As a race of people, we have exceeded this. We have way and way and way more of intelligence now. Yes. But we have definitely exceeded Definitely. We can do anything on the influence of the Holy Spirit. We choose to do. Amen. But we have to make the sacrifice. We have to be determined. And Brother Kenneth, we have to read. That's right. We have to get knowledge. We have to get wisdom. We have to get an understanding. Above all, we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, emotionally, and financially. The educational system has changed. What our kids might not know, they might not understand what it is to have a a panel interview. That's when more than one person interview you have to be focused, you have to be alert, you have to pay attention. It, so they ask questions. And while they're asking questions, they'll make a decision. But we okay. have exceeded this. This, this. this is a lie when it comes to us as a black race. You're talking about that paragraph, that not paragraph. the whole book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay. Can. All right. All right. Okay. So, so, so my, point, my point simply is that we can achieve great things because we are God's children. We're not better than anybody else. Are you listening to me? You're not better than the whites or better than the Hispanics, but we all have abilities to do our best. Are you all with me? Okay, okay, I'll I'll be personal. When I was a little kid, I, I... my mom was gone to California trying to make a better living for us while we were living in Oklahoma City. And unfortunately, fourth and fifth grade, I did not go to school too often. They had spelling. <laughs> they had spelling class in the fourth and fifth grade, third grade. And guess who missed? I missed. And so eventually, I went to school again in California in the the sixth grade, and the teacher just shook her head. She said, Alex, you will never, unfortunately, this was a black teacher. Um, She said, you will never amount to anything. You you will not make it. I just feel sorry for you because you're not going to make it. Yeah, I messed up in the third and fourth and fifth grade. And she gave me all Fs probably deserved them for the sixth grade. I failed the sixth grade. Okay, I'm not mad at that. that It happens. But just because you fail doesn't mean that you are a failure. My mother didn't listen to the lady. She said, you are my son. You can learn. And if you can't spell, then you're going to ask somebody to help you to spell. That's why I married my wife, since she can spell really good. <laughs> you gotta get somebody to help you to spell. All right? And 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 so eventually she sent me to a seventh grade and I started doing better in the eighth grade, ninth grade, and eventually I got a master's degree. And I really wanted to go back and talk to that teacher. But the Lord stopped me. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> The Lord stopped me. I was, I was going to call her name, but I'm not going to call her name. But, but the Lord stopped me and said, no, this came from the Lord. Amen. It wasn't because you're so good a speller, because you're not. Okay? But the point simply is that if you did bad, don't stay bad. Bye. This is what the lesson is trying to teach us. I don't care if you have some things in your life that you didn't do too well. Start again. Turn to your neighbor and say, start again. Start again. Thursday's lesson. 
black Americans participate in increase in knowledge. I don't have time to read all of that, but I hope that you go back home today and read a discussion. From the discoveries named above, list in order the three that you believe are capable of making the most significant contribution to society and statewide. I don't have time, okay? But look at all of those different, different types of discoveries that were made by black people and, and say, how, you know, how, how has that affected us today? I'm gonna to go to the discussion question at the bottom of page six. The education system operated by African-American Seventh-day Adventist churches and conferences have contributed nobly, notably to the gospel cause. However, the 21st century finds them greatly challenged with respect to substantiality, sub substainability. Give the restricted, given the restricted use of the tithe, are y'all listening to me? Given the restricted use of the tithe as outlined in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, what solutions do you see? A, greater pastoral emphasis and support. B, greater sacrifice by parents and members. C, merging schools with those of the state, primarily white conferences. D, if others, what? That was a pretty heavy question right there. Did y'all see that question? What do you think about the answer? What is the solution? Are y'all gonna go crickets on me now? Anybody got any? This is the first time you saw it? Okay, okay. If this is the first time you saw the question. All right, are y'all saw? What, what do you think is a good answer? Do you have a D answer? Do you have a C answer, B answer, A answer? Maybe merging the school systems. So because if all of us are failing, why can't we come together and work in unity? That's kind of what we're trying to do here in Memphis, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Uh, um, I had my answer as um, a greater sacrifice by parents and members. Uh, as long as, you know, schools, as, as long as schools meet their accreditations, you know, and uh, the criteria uh, and teachers, you know, uh, have their credentials, you know, I think, you know, that's my take on it. Because, you know, sacrificial. as a teacher, if, you're, if the parent is not helping you, you got a, you got a problem, don't you? you got a problem. When you send Johnny home or Leroy or whoever with his homework, and mom says, oh, you can watch TV, or you can play the video game. If, if, if the parents are not sacrificing their time, and with Adventist education, it's a sacrifice financially. I see your hand, somebody, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a financial sacrifice. My mother had seven kids, I was the last kid, and she wanted all of them to go to Adventist schools. My father died when I was four years old. She didn't have the money to send them, but the church paid my way to Adventist schools. And that's why, that's why I'm here today, knowing what I know, because some members of the church decided to help Miss Horton get her child, her children, to school. Okay, stand up. You got a question, statement. It's, 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 it's okay. Come on, tell us. Come on, tell us. Come on, say it. You don't have it? I'm surprised none of y'all said anything about the tithe. Did y'all see the, 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 some suggestions? Okay. Um, all right, I don't have time. Since Talk to me later, and I'll talk to you about the tithe and the offering. Is that fair enough? Okay, yes. Uh, it said, uh, given the restricted use of tithe as outlined in the Bible and spirit of prophecy, uh, the tithe uh, cannot be used uh, for the school. The tithe belongs to the, the Lord. So we cannot use our tithe, you know, as far as... Uh, uh, funds for uh, the school. Okay. Now the argument on that would be the tithe was used for the Levites. Isn't that right? Yes. What did Pastors, the Levites do? 
They attended the sanctuary. What else did they do? It, and also, um, they are. Uh, they taught, were teachers. Uh -huh, teachers. That sounds okay. like school to me. Teachers. <laughs> okay. They were teachers. Yes. I thought that tithing was simply for the furthering of the gospel. Yeah. And well, that can gospel. be used, and mm -hmm. that can be used in more than one different way. The pastors are not the only one who further the gospel. That's right. So when I teach a child something in school, I am instilling in that child the word of God, and hopefully they will go out and, you know, spread that abroad. I so can bring these answers out of y'all. It's just not for, I mean, just for the pastors. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, Pastor. No, no, I ain't even sorry. You know why? Because God's going to always take care of me. Yeah, that was, that was, it's for the furthering of the gospel. Then we, we can define it. Hopefully, when we define it, we define it biblically, what we're supposed to do, not to our own personal, how we want it used. The, mu for the furthering of the gospel. The musicians were Levites. Amen. Blow your mind, right? What? It's kind of scary. But you know what? All these. When you look at Levites, who the Levites were, mm -hmm. what did they do? The Levites were the ones that were writing in Psalms. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have decided, I'm not against it, I love our system. But men that were pastors decided how we would do that. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I just want to uh, make sure uh, you understood what I said. I didn't say the offering. I said the tithe. I'm talking about the tithe. Yeah, the tithe. Yeah, I'm not talking about the offering. Excuse me. Can you back up to, did you say the musicians were from the tribe of, were from Levites? Yes. Yes. What about the tribe of Judah? They're, I'm not sure that, that, that you can say they were the only ones. Okay, there are, there are probably musicians all over but I'm saying that the Levites, ASAP, and those different people, Korotha, they were in, in, the, in the Old Testament, they were Levites. Well, I think that. That's I difficult. think that could be a double play with them being Levitical, but at the same time, the tribe of Judah, the role of the tribe of Judah was that. They went out first. It was music. It was praise. It was so. I, I had to get some clarity on that question about yeah. music and the Levites. Yeah. Anything that had to do with worship, Levites were involved in. Anything that had to do with worship, Levites were involved in. Just read it. Okay. It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. Because I think we're Yeah. And so, so I'm not, I don't, I'm, Listen, I'm thankful for the tithe. I got just one minute, okay? I'm thankful for the tithe. But the tithe can be bigger than what we think it is. Okay? Uh, as, as Sister um, um, Faye said, it's for the gospel. So the missionary, the person that's working to keep the church clean, that's, that's Levites that did that. Just to, just to let you think about it a little bit. I got 33 seconds, and I'm going to have to close off. But I want you to read. The next one we're going to talk about is war. Okay? The next one we're going to talk about is war. Read for yourself. Don't believe Pastor Horton. Trust your own reading. Is that fair enough? I'm finished. I'm finished. You have one quickly? You have to say it in uh, I, five seconds. Yeah, I just have another comment oh, uh, on this discussion. Okay, getting back to the tithe. Okay, I understand what Sister Faye is saying also. Because our tithe really pays the pastor. So the pastor uh, preaches the gospel and, you know, uh, share the ministry. So uh, I, I see it in that way. I agree with you. The person who gives the Bible studies is sharing it too. Okay, I'm finished. Did I... I how did I do back there? Time. See you next Sabbath. Hey, hey study your lesson. Read it for yourself. Not only do we want you to study your lesson, but please, 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 please bring your books back with you next week. Amen. We'll have it on the screen as well. To those, again, to those of you who are at home, if you need us to mail you a copy, we can do that as well. Uh, but bring your books back, and we'll also have it on screen. Gentlemen, if you can go ahead and find the Sabbath School Overtime uh, 
um, slide because those of you who still want to uh, study the traditional adult Sabbath school lesson, we're going to do that uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m. So you can go home and get you something to eat. And uh, that's the information on the screen. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother uh, Technician, Brother Noah back there, if you can find the screen that has the Monday night Bible study on it, because it's the same number. Yeah, I think you might can see that a little, a little bit better. That's the same number. That's also a Bible study on Monday night. But go ahead and take it for those of you who are at home. Go ahead. Or those of you who are here, go and take a screenshot of that. That's the Sabbath school overtime number. At 2 p.m., we'll study the traditional Sabbath school lesson. And it'll be facilitated by one of our finest teachers. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Had this, had this, has not this been a great study? And we're going to, Pastor will be teaching it all month. Let's stand. Get somebody spiritual. Well, Elder Turner has an announcement and he can pray us out. Just wanted to remind you that Deborah has the lesson study for this Wednesday night prayer meeting. We hope you'll get one and uh, join us. Uh, and she also has a handout for the business meeting tonight. So uh, you can get both documents from Deborah. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy to us. You have blessed us. You have been with us. You have um, strengthened us and enlightened us, Father, and we just thank you. We ask now as we leave this place that you continue to be with us. Grant us your mercies as we travel. And, Lord, uh, bring us back to the appointed time, Lord, with praises in our hearts and a song on our lips, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.